There is no such thing as an engineering profession uh, today that is not deeply influenced by digitalization, as uh, the keyword goes. Was there a point where you noticed that digitization or digital transformation changed the way you work as a university? You know, if you think that there was a flip, a switch that you flipped and then uh, we ch changed behavior, then this is a wrong metaphor. This is a gradual development that takes place over decades. And therefore the word the revolution uh, sometimes I think is uh, useful for communication and media purposes, but it's not really what's going on. This is a continuous transformation that has started in the 1980s, even before probably, when first email appeared, when the first computers were networked together, early 1970s, ARPANET and all these developments at that time, the protocols were invented, the browser technology was invented. And we as scientists, as engineers, are tech geeks. We always pick that up as quickly as possible as it's available. And in a university environment which is full of tech geeks, this was always there as soon as it was available. Once again, it's not one moment in time that it has happened. It has happened for the last 30, 40 years. And it is a consequence of the huge progress that uh, microelectronics computation devices have made. Moore's law, what we are seeing here, is essentially the working of Moore's law. Where do you see the main advantages of digital technologies in the future? First of all, efficiency gains. Uh, we can make the same things with much less energy, resources, time, money, losses. Just think of the medical sector. How many errors could be avoided by having a completely digitized information chain, avoiding wrong medication, double medication, avoiding errors in whatever uh, medical procedure. So making the system much more efficient, that is one thing. And secondly, of course, making the system able to do other things that haven't been uh, possible so far. The fact that information is available at zero cost, at arbitrary bandwidth everywhere, renders, of course, many, many jobs much easier. And thirdly, you can do completely new things, particularly for if you want to start up new businesses, this development that you don't have to make a huge investment in uh, computation resources or in software by having the cloud providing you with the essential tools to create a business out of zero investment, essentially. This has helped many young startups to go from zero to 100 in a very, very fa fa fast pace. So once again, I, I think the development is very, very promising and I'm very optimistic that we can achieve much advance in it. Have you noticed any negative impacts of digital transformation on science and education? I don't think so. Science loves changes. Uh, education can be uh, boosted by these uh, new developments. I think that the, the problems are more with the general public that uh, undergoes these rapid changes and of course this creates a lot of anxiety a lot of uh, insecurity and uh, yeah, that's uh, the downside of it. But there are many, many upsides, so the glass is not half empty, the glass is almost full. We need to make our students able to deal with situations which we have not encountered, which they will encounter in future, and we don't know exactly how these situations will be. And of course, the, the, this begs the question, how do we do that? And the answer is rather simple with two, three components. First of all, you need a very sound formation in the basics. Some things we know will be true also in millions of years. Newton's law will still be there. So if we teach our students things that are really fundamental, that's a good basis. And the second thing, which is probably even more important, is we need to teach our students how to think how to think critically, how to think creatively, and how to use that uh, creation process, how to use this uh, thinking uh, process to create new value, to act in an entrepreneurial way. Basics, critical thinking, 
and entrepreneurial action. That's the best preparation we can give to them. Some people say maybe it was easier earlier. You know, imagine being maybe 30, 40 years younger and studying today. Do you think you would enjoy this environment? I would for sure enjoy being 30 years younger. But I enjoyed this environment when I was young at a long time ago, and I'm sure that our students enjoy this environment right now. It, it, it is different on the outside, but on the inside it's exactly the same. If you want to do cutting-edge research, if you want to have a very successful business, if you want to be uh, the most uh, prolific writer, pianist, whatever, musician, you are in a competition. This doesn't change. Competition on one side, of course, is tough. You have to fight, you have to work hard, you have to devote whatever your energy you have. On the other side, competition is the source of progress. It has brought humanity much uh, higher than it was when it started. And so I think the, 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 the key elements in life are always the same. You need to choose a field where you're interested in, and then you need to compete, to progress, to go to the front of the development of the science, uh, of the boundary of knowledge, and there you need to make your own contribution. This is always the same, this will be the same, and this is extremely rewarding. Imagine you're the first person who knows a new fact of microbiology. This is a fantastic uh, situation that you have in life. And then you can share it with the world and the world will, will benefit because it can heal a, a disease which so far was not uh, curable. These are the things that I dream for and these are the things that our students dream of. Do you think the current economic and political system is ready to take full advantage of new technologies? There will be resistances, of course. There will be people who will uh, lose and they will fight back. And uh, it is a struggle that has, going on, has been going on forever, or at least since humanity became what it is today. So, yes, there will be problems. I'm not saying that this is a, just uh, an easy way, but I believe, again, that uh, having access to information, which is one of the key aspects of this digital revolution everywhere, from various sources, is a fundamental element to progress. And all, how shall I say it, all walls that are built up, being uh, physical walls or virtual walls in the internet, humans have always been very, very creative at tearing down walls, and I'm sure that they will be teared down. Have you made a personal experience with some kind of disruption through digital technologies? No, it's, as I said, it's not an aha moment in my life. I don't think there is a, a disruption. People always talk about disruptive technology, okay. But if you look back, it's a continuous process. It's an evolutionary process. I believe in evolution. That's maybe the most personal statement that you get out of me. <laughs>